Now, the Rafida, this is um, the sect of the Shia that are most have the most animosity for the general body of the companions, except for whom they deem to be Ahlul Bayt, the family members, again, exempting the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those mentioned in the Qur'an as being Ahlul Bayt, and they have serious animosity for them to the point where they curse them, and they believe cursing them is an action of ibadah, of worship that is better than such and such salat and such and such zakat, and their beliefs are uh, in, in direct contradiction to that which was taught by our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are represented in the modern day Iranian uh, government and people. They follow the way of the Rafidah. So Iranians by default are Rafidah uh, and their leaders are the ones who teach the hatred of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, the hatred of Umar ibn Khattab, the hatred of the most beloved people to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam unjustly without right. And it is from our religion to reject that from them and to show open hatred and open freedom or tabarru from such people and their beliefs. Yet we have people, yatabaddalun, people who are, are trading in the guidance of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for political unity, for political ambitions. And so, the honor of our mother, Umm al Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu anha, has become a bargaining chip on a political agenda table. Where the honor of Aisha can be cast aside or can be conceded or given up if there is a benefit in not protecting Aisha, not defending Aisha, leaving her alone, don't mention her in the presence of people who hate her, slander her, accuse her of fornication, and curse her continually as an act of worship, that we ignore this issue and we sacrifice the honor of our mother for what? For some political ambition. Because we need political unity, because we need to get such and such mayor, congressman, senator, city councilman, etc. into office. Because why? He may give us some tax exemption for our masjid. So it has come down to the honor of the companions being used as a bargaining chip to get close to what? Saving some money or having some political advantage in some political arena. None of, none of which amounts to anything near the foundations of our religion. And we don't possess the honor of our own brothers so as to sacrifice our brother's honor. The average everyday Muslim, his honor is a sanctuary. And you don't have any say to give it up to someone for a political goal of unity. That is not your right. You can't do that with the everyday rank and file Muslim. So how could you do that with the very best of the Muslims, the companions of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your mother, Umm al muminina Aisha. And with that uh, bargaining chip they use, we hate them for the sake of Allah. And we say to you, look to an organization called the Islamic Society of North America, ISNA. And ISNA is, of recent years, over the last two years especially, a significant promoter of what they call Sunni Shi'i dialogue. And it's not dialogue, it's unity. Right? And it's not Sunnis, it's Ikhwanis. It should be called Ikhwani Shi'i unity. Because Ahl sunnah we have nothing to do with these people. Ahl sunnah will not come together in unity with those who curse our mother, Umm al-Mu'minina Aisha. If we said to people, for the sake of political unity and for the sake of solving our differences in the world today, we want you, the people of Iran, to just take care of one man, one simple man who's a Muslim, and his daughter. Could you do that for us? And as long as you mention any everyday person, They'll say, yes, we'll take care of this man as long as you agree to come together with us. So we say, the man we wish you to take care of, his name is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Abdullah ibn Abi Qahafa. We want you to take care of him. We want you to stop slandering him. We want you to honor him and respect him, as a Muslim at least. Right? They will not do it. Because the foundation of their religion is bughd, is hatred and animosity. For those people whom Allah Ta'ala has praised.
the very best of them being Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, as we will see. Tayyib. So we see, for example, their political agenda, the Washington Declaration from the year 2013. If you were to go into the, the, um, the details of this, uh, of this declaration, they're using the word declaration, like it's the Declaration of Independence or something so significant politically and historically. This is from the wording of that declaration. And just to look at the beginning there, right? It is forbidden to violate man's rights, those things sanctified to him, and to indict others based on religious beliefs. We say, look at all the protection and defense. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, he's not one of these people, apparently, huh? He doesn't have any rights that are inviolable. His rights are easily, you know, desecrated. And thought, it is also forbidden to attack others by name calling. One Nasibi, the other one Rafili. That's their goal, Rafili. They don't want anyone to call them Rafili. Or even Kafir, and so forth. Or even disbeliever, and so forth. Look at this, the, the reason. For such judgments are Allah Almighty's to make and no other. So they don't believe that you can make a statement or an action of disbelief and be labeled a cat. So they have done away with takfir. They have done away with it. It's in the garbage can in this agreement. It is totally rejected. So that means whatever you come with, whatever you say, whatever apostasy, whatever blasphemy, you cannot call a person a disbeliever. Why? Because of political agendas, right? The Prophet ﷺ foretold such Fitna, the fitna that was coming when a man will go out in the morning as a believer and by nightfall he's a disbeliever. Or at night he's a believer and by morning he's a disbeliever. <inaudible> he will sell out his religion for a small petty price of the worldly life. And this is what's happening. We're selling out the foundations of our religion, selling out the basic beliefs in Islam, the basic honor due to the very best of people, we sell that out and use it as a bargaining chip so that we can attain some kind of worldly uh, unity, some kind of political-based unity to get some kind of political advantage. And we ask Allah Ta'ala for refuge from such misguidance.